Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to celebrate the Holy Eucharist that is the source and summit of our Christian life. Today, as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter, Father will offer the Holy Mass for Harold and Evelyn Bass. There are a few announcements. This weekend, our first Eucharist candidates will be welcomed to the table of the Lord. Please keep them in your prayers. The Confirmation Retreat is this Sunday, May 1st, noon at Immaculate Conception Church in Ranceville. Confirmation will be at All Saints Parish on May 28th. The closing session for Faith Formation will be May 15th. Pope Francis has begun a worldwide synod to hear the many and varied voices from everyone. You may participate in one of the listening sessions set up by the diocese by going to the diocese website or St. Brennan's web pages. Information and a list of listening session flyers are also located in the back of the church. This coming Thursday, the Blessed Mother Novena will resume at 6 p.m. in Alcott, and we will continue until the last Thursday of October. Further information on these and other important events are listed in the church bulletin. Now please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the Lord's sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, and we ask for our God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh 
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest, questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this name, this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but 
love with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john Lord, to you, Lord. at the same time jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the sea of tiberius he revealed himself in this way together where simon peter called thomas of didymus Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two of the other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will also come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized that it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. 
Now this was the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you were into movies in the 90s, we may have seen the first of the series, uh, Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Sort of uh, funny how the plot begins when uh, Tim Allen, his character, stumbles upon a contract, a hidden contract, and sort of accidentally finds himself bound by this contract where he would become the next Santa Claus. And as time goes on, and first it sounded very ridiculous, he starts to take on more and more characteristics of Santa Claus. First, he's just not having it, not pleased with it. You know, it's taking him sort of out of his element. And it's just like, okay, yep, this was all a bad dream. I'm imagining this whole thing, and he's denying it. But then it starts to manifest himself in becoming Santa Claus and, you know, talking like Santa, looking like him more and more. And his ex-wife and her partner, who happens to be a psychiatrist, they're starting to be made, you know, uneasy, frustrated by the whole thing. And they're, you know, imploring him enough. Stop this whole thing. Stop the talk about it. Snap out of it. You're not Santa Claus. You know, stop this whole, you know, ordeal. But then more and more time went on. Now Tim Allen moved from, you know, just not being able to hide it. Now he fully accepts. And then he even goes beyond accepting and he moves to proudly being Santa Claus. There he is, you know, we see the harder he tried to fight he just realized there was no fighting it. He could only be who he really was. There was one scene, as a matter of fact, where he dyed his hair, shaved, you know, and trying to get back into his old look, and immediately, beard comes back, hair becomes whiter than ever, and just was no fighting it. Of course, every analogy limps, you know, thank God for that, you know, but he came to finally realize who he was meant to be, and then was proudly that person, that character. We hear a lot now about the apostles and who they were, who they were meant to be, what they were truly meant to do, and we see how they went through a same kind of journey. These post-resurrection accounts that Jesus is having with the apostles now were very pivotal for really laying out the work for what kind of mission they would be going on, who they were, and they also made a lot of other things that were told to them before the resurrection click. It makes sense. So we could see at first some of the stories of the apostles. They're very shaky. They're apprehensive. They're 
confused, struggling to make sense out of what this whole resurrection thing means or what Jesus was really trying to show them by all the crazy talk that he did and, and then being put to death and then supposedly rising from the dead. So where are they? They're hiding. We hear about them in the upper room. The door is locked. We hear about Peter. Peter is all over the place. You know, first he's denying Jesus, but now he sees Jesus again. But he says three times that he knows Jesus and that he loves him, sort of undoing his denial. But we also hear from Acts of the Apostles about how the apostles moved from that denial, now they are on fire with the gospel, with preaching the gospel. Just like if we think again about the Santa Claus, you know, Clark, his, um, his ex-wife and her partner, you know, they're embarrassed by this transformation that Tim is going through, and they're, they're Clark, whatever the character's name is, and they're telling him, you know, enough, can it? The apostles, when they were preaching about the risen Christ, that ruffled a lot of feathers of the powers that be. And they were telling them basically the same thing. Enough of this Jesus talk. Stop preaching his name. Stop promoting his name. Just cool it and, you know, you'll be fine. But they couldn't contain that message that they were given to share. They couldn't tame, contain or hide any longer the new identity that they have of not just an association with Christ, but being one with Christ now. So as the threat of that persecution continued to face them, they were not at all deterred by it. Instead, they said, well then, what a privilege it is for us to share in the sufferings that Christ went through for the good of his word. Now all of us, we might not be like the apostles, having the same kind of a, a preaching role that we have to do. But we are all heralds of the risen Christ. Eucharistically, as a Eucharistic people, we're people connected with Christ as members of his very body. So we're not just associated with Christ. We don't just simply have knowledge in Christ, but our very identity is Christ in such a way that we become, the more we eat of that sacrament, the closer we get to Christ, the more we actually do become him in a way that we can't deny, can't contain, but should have no reason to want to, eventually to a point where we just we're no longer confused or troubled by it, but just want to proudly be Christ. St. Paul, even though he comes on the scene later, after the ascension of Jesus, he did apostolic work as well. He wasn't one of the twelve, but he joined the apostolic mission after his conversion later on. And he got to that point where he had that profound realization where he said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So where are we in our not just knowing Christ, preaching Christ, but being Christ? Being Christ proudly, without hesitation. So may we turn more and more to that sacrament, know that sacrament, but most importantly, know in Christ who we are, and what we have been called to do. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. 
Through him all things are made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the, Holy by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the, the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our duty of being members of Christ's body to others, we now ask our God for what we need in order to live out our membership in his body. Our response today is, Christ our hope, hear our prayer. For the Church, that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we may give convincing witness to the freeing and healing power of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our hope, hear our, our prayer. For all young people who will be receiving First Communion this weekend, that they may grow in their faith and their awareness of God's love for them, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our hope, hear our prayer. For our families, that meal times spent together may be times of nourishment, healing, reconciliation, and encouragement of one another. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our hope, hope hear, hear our prayer. That we may all work to change unjust laws that permit abortion, taking courage from the Apostle's word that we must obey God rather than man. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our hope, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially Harry Hazlitt, Jason Berry, Don Martinick, Joseph Guido, Jeffrey Antonick, that the healing spirit of the risen Christ may bring light and wholeness to them, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our hope, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially Virginia Jinjin Reinbolt, John Conley, Doug Walsh, and our faithful departed. We pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our, our hope, hope, hear our prayer. For Harold and Evelyn Bass, for whom this Eucharist is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Christ, Christ our hope, hear, hear our, our prayer. For all of us gathered here at St. Brendan on the Lake, and for families of all public private schools, including DeSales Catholic School, that God will broaden our vision to see ourselves praising and serving God in harmony with all creation. We pray to the Lord. Praise God. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our needs and our petitions that we bring before you today. We ask that you grant them according to your good will for us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly 
food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we pass and share the blood of Christ our poor? Cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no By the hungry heart, with gift of finest wheat, come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, and selfless let us be to serve each other. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exalted church, as you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those unable to attend Mass in person to receive the Eucharist, I invite you to pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Labor, the gift 
lift of sun and vine. We come to taste the presence of him we claim as Lord. His dying and his living, his leaving and his giving, his love in cup of Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. To join in praying now our prayer for renewal. Hopefully our supply is a little bit even because recently I went and replenished the pews with the cards. Hopefully they'll hold out for a while. We pray in every age, O oh God, you have, you have called, called us, us to be your people, to be your church. church. In, In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice. And steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.